Hi, Jerry Corley here, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. Uh, I know I've been away for a while, took a little holiday hiatus, but we're back with some more episodes, some more, some more information, some more uh, answering the tweets and helping you guys uh, move along in this uh, fascinating, amazing, amazing art form called comedy. Uh, I'm Jerry Corley. I've been a uh, stand-up comedian for about 30 years. I wrote uh, for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno for about eight years. Uh, I've toured all around the world. And now I teach a course uh, along with still touring, still doing corporate, still writing screenplays. Uh, I teach a course in Burbank, California at the Stand Up Comedy Clinic, uh, a clinic I founded, sort of a workshop I founded. Uh, years ago, I always wanted to create a comedy gym where comedians could get together, have writer's rooms, have writer's groups, uh, have a community of supporting artists, you know, guys who would like work together, help each other through synergy as opposed to enemy, because that's what sometimes happens in the art world. I mean, let's face it, comedians are, out of all the artists, I think, you have writers, you have actors, uh, dancers, musicians, comedians are probably at a scale of insecurity between say, uh, dancers are here, actors are here, writers are here. Uh, it's like the, the top of the insecurity totem pole. Uh, yeah, uh, comedians are way up there or way down here because they're depressed and they're insecure. So what happens, what that turns into is being afraid to support another comedian. There's like this weird fear that comedians have that if they help another comedian or if they laugh at another comedian at an open mic, I don't know how many of you are doing the mics, but if you laugh at another comedian during a mic, it somehow takes something away from your level of funny. I, I don't know, sometimes the brain works that way. But when I started doing comedy, I had this kind of cool group of open micers that we, we went around for different open mics around town together and supported one another. We would laugh at the jokes and we would laugh harder when the joke bombed because we were in the same boat ourselves and it's sort of that support laugh. Don't worry bro, we got your back sort of thing. So that's kind of what we did. So this entire journey through my stand-up career and you know, writing screenplays now and still doing shows. Uh, I've always been supportive, been very positive. In my, in my classes, I teach with positivity as opposed to negativity because neg negativity has no place in a creative environment. So it's all positive, which helps them with their confidence, helps people get started, get on stage. You know, a lot of people, their number one fear, they say the number one fear with human beings is getting up on stage and talking to people. I don't know about you, but my number one fear, anal rape. You know, I can talk all day. I just don't want to drop the soap in the shower. That's all I'm saying. So that's basically who I am, if you haven't uh, been on this channel before. And uh, if you have, what I do is I take questions uh, at, uh, on Twitter from comedians or people that are fledgling com comedians just starting in the business, and you want to learn something, you know, people hit me up on Twitter. They send me uh, a question on Twitter. My handle on Twitter is at Joke Doctor. That's the at symbol and Joke Doctor. All just full, uh, the whole word, Doctor, Joke Doctor. You'll see it at the end. But this is what we do. We answer questions and I fill in. I teach people how to write comedy. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check out the How to Write Comedy Like Chris Rock. How to, how to Write a Joke Like Chris Rock, which is probably at the top of this this channel right here, you'll see it is pinned to the top of the channel right now. It's a very popular video. So take a look at that. That'll uh, give you a little insight to, to what we do here. So anyway, we're answering a tweet in this video. And this tweet comes from a guy named Marco. Now Marco writes, hey, Ed, uh, hey Jerry, I'm working on my first ever five minute set right now. First of all, congratulations, Marco. And my apologies for answering this so late. Uh, you probably already did this, you're probably already middling somewhere around the country at the, at the delay uh, that it took me to answer this, this particular tweet. Um, but I think I answered it actually in Twitter and I just told you I'd get a video done. So I'm just getting back into the back at home and I'm uh, doing some videos now. So here we go. So he's doing my first ever set right now. I think that's the coolest thing ever. I remember when I did my first five minute set. Uh, so, so far it sounds good in my head, but how do you know, do you have a tip on how to test the set? Should I do my set in front of a few friends first or just hit the stage? Thanks, ask the joke doctor. Now, great question. 
and everybody has this question. Do I do it in front of my friends or I just hit the stage with it? Um, either or, both work. Uh, I uh, didn't do it in front of my friends. I didn't want anybody to see me bomb. So I used to go to these mics by myself all alone. I'd get up on stage and try the material. The point is to try it. A lot of people like to try it out on their friends first. Uh, I tr say, uh, for one thing, avoid doing it in front of a girlfriend, a spouse, uh, a husband, uh, a wife, a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, because they, so boyfriends and girlfriends have a tendency to see us not who they think we are, but worse, who they want us to become. Does that make sense? So if you do something that doesn't fit their ideology, often they'll say that's not funny. And yet if you do that around your friends, they'll laugh their asses off. So, and eventually an audience will find who you are and either like your comedy or like your point of view or not. But the point is, girlfriends, husbands, wives, boyfriends uh, tend to see us who they think we are and worse, who they want us to become. So that's why I avoid uh, telling uh, jokes like that to you know, spouses. That's what I recommend to people. Because I remember my uh, first wife, I love saying that, my first wife. She, uh, I did a joke uh, one time my first night in Vegas. I woke up in the hotel room. A housekeeper was banging on the door. I'm on the phone with her. She goes, how was your first night in Vegas? I go, great. And then all of a sudden I hear the housekeeper banging on the door. And I realized I forgot to put that do not disturb sign out there. And I said, oh, damn. And she's like, what? I said, housekeeper's banging on the door. I, I get a better get up and uh, let her out. And I just said it as a joke. And uh, she goes, that's not funny. <laughs> you know, and I thought, hey, it wasn't funny. But then I tried it out on stage that night, and it got big laughs. And I went, wait a second. Then I realized there was a couple of jokes, lots of jokes that I told her that she would say, that's not funny, because she had and own, her own idea of who she thought I was, worse, who she wanted me to become. So I didn't do those jokes in front of her. And then I realized when I did them on stage, they were funny. So I divorced her. True story. So <laughs> the comedy's who I am. That's what I live for. That's my soul. That's my heart and soul. It's my whole being. It's what I live for. So if she's not helping me be who I want to be, then I don't need that in my life. So uh, anyway, I'm not saying go get a divorce or break up with your girlfriend or anything, Marco, but try it out in front of your friends if you would like, or just get up on stage and do it. The point is do it. We can get, you know, we can get stuck. So, the, the, so test with friends, yes, positive thing to do. Uh, but I let you know some of the, the pitfalls of that is sometimes you'll get somebody say something because it doesn't fit in their ideal or ideology they actually criticize the joke. You've got to keep, stay aware of that. But if you have a group of trusting friends or a very special spouse who is, wants you to be who you want to be, then by all means, test in front of friends. And also, uh, get up on stage and just riff it on stage. Give it a shot. Here's the important thing. When you hit that stage, if you've done your rehearsal, if you've done your practice, and it sounds funny in your head, and you've reviewed it several times in your head, I like to go over a brand new set like 25 times out loud uh, before I perform it. So when I get on stage, I know the ins and outs of it. Now I also leave the set and deal with the moment and then come back to the material. That's why I go through it so much. So I can leave, deal with the material, deal with whatever happens in the room, you know, through crowd work or whatever, and then I can get back to the material. But uh, when you hit the stage, the point is hit that stage, Forget everything and just play. Have fun with the people in the room. Stand-up comedy is a conversation. It's a little party. It's usually a one-sided conversation for the most part, but if you're not listening to them, their thoughts, their nods, you know, their nods are, yes, we just processed what you said, now you can go on with the material. You know, that, that's where timing comes from. Really checking them out to make sure they're listening, not only listening, but hearing you, hearing what you said, getting the image of what you just created before you hit the punchline, if that makes sense. So, yes, riff, great idea. Have fun on stage with it. 
read it through your friends, with your friends. That's good as well. Play it with your friends, see what they think. But either one works. The point is don't get stuck, right? A lot of times we, we're sitting there stuck for an answer on something we really truly have the answer to, which is, hell, get up on stage and do it, right? So eventually you're going to do that. Get up on stage and do it. Always, always audio tape. At least run that voice memo on your phone, set it to airplane mode or whatever so a call doesn't come in and interrupt and stop the recording, but record that set. If somebody can get a video recording of you, by all means get it on video so you can check out your body language and your nuances. But it, so you can go back and review that set authentically and see where the jokes worked and where they didn't. Because you're going to have jokes that work and jokes that don't. Just never lose your sense of humor about a joke that doesn't work. Laugh through it. Well, that joke really hit, you know, hit the wall or whatever. That, that joke really hit a flat line. What is, I feel like a doctor that just heard clear, boop, you know. So do some, you know, make fun of the fact that the joke doesn't work. Have a sense of humor about not having your sense of funny for that night or whatever for that joke. Never be afraid of making fun of the fact that the joke's not working tonight. So, um, but both of those work, friends or riff. But if you get stuck, if you're like, I don't know whether I should do this or this. A lot of times people do that. We get stuck in, in like this paralysis, if I could speak, we get stuck in this paralysis where we don't make a decision and take action. That happens a lot with people, whether it's you're writing a book, whether you're creating a music, or whether you're getting up on stage and performing a show, or whether you're writing a play or a movie. You get in stuck at something called the gap, right? Something called the gap theory. And I want you to really pay attention to this. The gap theory is something we all get caught in. And I learned it from a friend of mine. And he learned it from somebody else. But it makes so much sense. If you think about it this way, off in the horizon, right, the horizon is perfection in our mind's eye, right? Perfection. We want to reach the horizon. That's perfection. So either we're putting out a product, we're writing a book, we're doing a set, we're recording music, we have a, we're writing a movie. Off on the horizon is perfection. So we want to reach perfection because we want that thing, that set, that product, that book, that album, that music to be perfect. But the problem is the horizon, since the Earth is rotating, keeps moving off in the distance. We'll never reach perfect. So the, the idea is put it out there. Get it out there and then improve it. Get it out there again, then improve it again. Get it out there again, then improve it again. It's sort of the Microsoft theory. Put it out, then put it out again, 38% more improved, right? So that's how you put out, put out products. You don't put them out perfect because they're never going to reach perfect. Software we get all the time and they're doing updates. I mean, Apple does an update every, every 15 seconds, right? Because it's not perfect. There's always something that needs to be fixed. There's always a bug. There's always something different. The point is, get out and do it. Listen to it. Fix it. Get out and do it again. And always, always, always have fun while you're doing it. Sometimes th the bombs can be painful, but still you learn so much from them. So don't be afraid to get up there and just play. Learn from it. Fix it. Get up again. I hope this video added some value to your day. And uh, if you're enjoying this uh, and you have some questions dealing with your uh, intro to comedy or your development in comedy or any questions at all you might have, whether it's writing, whether it's performing, whether it's pitching a show for television, whether, whether it's writing a script, uh, whether it's um, uh, going on the road, all of that stuff. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. On Twitter, you'll find my handle at, uh, at JokeDoctor. And uh, if you can, if you have room, hashtag it with Ask the Joke Doctor, and I'll be happy to put a video just like this together to help you with your question, uh, as long as answering it briefly on the, on the Twitter feed. Uh, also, if you're digging the stuff you're seeing on this channel, please feel free to subscribe. Hit that bell, bing, so that you get notifications, reminders that hit up on your phone or on your computer uh, to let you know we got a new video up for you. Uh, so, and that will help, uh, that'll help move it along.
Give it a like if you like it. Uh, and if you don't like it, hell, give it a, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't bother me. Uh, also, comments, if you have a question, there's always the comment section below. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed this and it brought value to your day. I'm Jerry Corley. I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.